nice introduction, nice introduction, all right. So hello everyone, uh, full room, so thank you very much for, for attending. Uh, so yeah, my name is Felipe Ximenez, and uh, this is my Twitter account, so you can find me. And I'm from Brazil, so I'm actually from this city called Recife, and quite far, so long trip. And I'm glad I'm here, so, and thank you all for, for coming. Uh, all right, so I work, and I have a company there, it's called Vinta, and we do web development, so we work with a lot of APIs, we work a lot of um, integra integration with external services such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and some private uh, services. Uh, we do a lot of Angular, we do a lot of React, so yeah, so if you need something like this, just talk to me. All right, so here uh, I'll be talking today about APIs. So API is just an acronym for Application Programming Interface, which, which does not say uh, a lot about what it is, uh, but it gives an idea. So it, it's basically, uh, an API it defines how we interact with a software. And when I say a software, I, it can be a, a Python class, a database, um, some library, or a web service or, or any plugin. So it's pretty broad definition. So for example, if you are talking about Python uh, and we have this uh, user class, the API will be, uh, it will have like the attributes, the name and the email and we have the methods, update data and talk. So this would be the API of uh, my, my user class. Uh, for example, if you go to a web service, and API can be, uh, th this is like the API for Instagram. So the first method gets uh, a media, it can be a photo or a video. The second method posts a comment, and the last one deletes it. So this is a, a partial definition of the API for Instagram. All right, so uh, I'll be talking uh, more about integrating services. So we, we are focusing here about uh, web APIs, all right? Uh, so let's say uh, a, a customer comes to you and he asks you to develop a software, uh, web software, uh, whatever, and he wants the user to log in with Facebook, and then he wants you to fetch like his the user basic info from his Facebook account. Um, so I have some options here for what we can do. Uh, the first option would be go to Facebook documentation and read its API documentation and we could use urllib2 that comes with Python to make the request that would work, no, no problems. A uh, second op option would be, again, read the, the API documentation and instead of using urllib2, we could use request library which is much more cleaner and, and I really like it. It's easy to use and this would be easier and, and it's a good option too. And the third option would be go on Google and just search for like wrappers and something ready to go to interact with Facebook and then you, we could go to the beach. Uh, that's like, I suppose we could. Let's take a deeper look to see if this is really possible. So uh, first of all, first of all uh, so we are on the same page. When I say API wrapper, uh, I'm, a wrapper would be just a implementation of uh, API documentation in a programming language. And it, it can be in any pro programming language. Uh, today we'll be talking about Python, but uh, you can build a, a wrapper for, the, for a web API on any, any language. So uh, it's basically just a, a, a thin layer over HTTP and it will help you developing software, uh, integrating services. So. Some things that are basic to an to a API wrapper is authentication. Uh, it should be able to compose URLs. It should be able to prepare requests before you, you actually make them. And should be able to process responses and format data. All right, so uh, if you are talking with the API that returns JSON, it should be able to convert JSON to a native uh, format. So, so if you are talking Python, that will be probably a dictionary. So, uh, for example, for this test, we could use FacePy. That's uh, one of the most popular 
uh, wrappers for Facebook API available. And it's basically composed of two methods. The first one is the get method, and you can pass a path and some options. Uh, we can see on the example here, uh, we are building the endpoint on the path, so I have to like write the string for the endpoint, and then I can pass like page true, and this will, uh, when, when I fetch uh, uh, this endpoint me links, it will return for me, uh, not all the links in my Facebook wall, you return pages of it because instead it, it, it would be too much data to come, come at once. So inside Facebook returns it on pages. So when I pass, pass page two, FacePy will iterate, when, when I iterate over the response, FacePy will automatically fetch new pages. So I don't have like to worry about getting the next page and the next page. So I, I would just work with the links uh, it returns. Also, uh, the return the links, they are dictionary. So they are Python dictionary, All right? So the next max, uh, method is the post. And this time, uh, we again have the, to build the endpoint like a string. But now, we don't know, uh, since it's a post, we are trying to post, uh, uh, in this example, we are trying to post a new status to my Facebook wall. Uh, I don't really know what's the format of the data they are expecting. Uh, neither the documentation tells me. So I'll have to go to uh, Facebook's documentation, uh, API documentation, and read about this. So uh, our first, uh, we, are, we first thought we could just get like this wrapper from the internet and start using it without reading documentation. And when you get it, you just see it's not possible. You, have, you still have to go to the documentation. So some notes, uh, I just said. Uh, so we, we have, had to read about the wrapper documentation. We had to read about the uh, API documentation as well. So another example would be Python Twitter. That's one of the most popular wrappers for tw Twitter. So um, it's a bit different from the FacePy one. It's instead of me building the UR, the endpoints, it gives me the uh, methods. So I can just pass parameters, and it, it will handle the, the rest for me. Uh, here are some, some of the methods of this library. Uh, as we can see, it does not follow PEP8, pep so it's using combo case instead of snake case. Uh, nothing wrong with this, just not usual. And instead of returning dictionaries, it returns classes. So uh, a bit different as well. All right, it also uses PyDoc documentation. It's arguably not very Pythonic. Uh, it has no pagination support, so I cannot do what I just explained to you about the FacePy one. And it has a method for each endpoint and uses models instead of dictionaries. So, uh, okay, given this scenario, let's imagine now, uh, and this is, a, this is a real scenario, it actually happened in my company. A client came to us asking for us to integrate with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, and Blogger. This is a lot of integrations. And imagine now I'm having to always read the wrappers documentation and then the API documentation. It's a, it's a pain. It's really painful. So uh, let's think of if you are trying to write like the, the perfect uh, wrapper, API wrapper, what would you like to have in, in it? So authentication, that's basic. All wrappers should have it. Uh, I would like to use requests. As I said, uh, I really like the, this library. Uh, it should have pagination support, and should uh, it would be nice to have like some exception raising, so I know what uh, error code came on the response. Uh, right, hypermedia support uh, would be also be nice, so I could just follow links instead of building these these links. Uh, I would love to be it to be explorable, so I can play with it before doing the final implementation. And I would love to have a simple documentation. So uh, since I will have to read the, the API documentation anyway, I would like the wrapper documentation to be simple so I don't, don't waste too much time on it. And this brings us to tapioca. So first, what's tapioca? All right. 
So tapioca is this Brazilian food. It looks like a tortilla. It's a bit softer. And you, like, you put whatever you want inside it. It can be sweet. It can be cheese. It can be a chocolate. It can be uh, meat, whatever you want. It's really tasteful. If you ever come to Brazil, you should try it. So I have a little demo for this. <laughs> All right. So that's me preparing a tapioca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Now back to the code. So you can find this library at uh, my company's GitHub. So Vinter Software slash tapioca dash wrapper and. Uh, what is it? It's basically a Python framework for creating web API, API wrappers. So, talk ship. Let's show me the code. Demo time. Uh, let's see what we can do with tapioca. Uh, it's here. All right. So, uh, we will be using uh, tapioca Facebook. So that's the Tapioca implementation for the Facebook uh, API, and we also be using IPython, so we can better explore the package, and it has some nice features when you use IPython. So, first of all, right, let's go IPython, and all right, import the library from Tapioca Facebook, import Facebook. Nice. So, <laughs> all right, a bit slow, but yeah. <laughs> so, first thing, we have to pass an access code, uh, access token, so we can use the API. Uh, we will get this from the developers.facebook.com on the Graph API Explorer, so just grab it. Valid token, nice. Back to the right. Nice. So, all right, let's play. Uh, the first thing I like to go it's uh, if you if you press tab on IPython, you can see the full list of methods available for this wrapper, and we'll be looking at the user likes uh, method. And uh, we are like learning about this right now, so let's see what, what's available at the user likes endpoint. So we can see there's a, a partially mounted URL. Uh, if you go with a question mark, you can see more info about it. And that's from the package. So I, I can see I, I can pass an ID to the URL. And let's, but this do, does not give like full information about this endpoint. So let's uh, open the documentation for this endpoint so you can understand more about it. So you can just go open docs and you open in your browser straight away. All right, so we can see that they will be returning a data and a paging. A data is an array, and this, da this data has, uh, this response will have will come in pages, as we saw, and these are the available uh, attributes for the response. So, um, yeah, all right, so. We just, just took a look at the directly at the IP documentation as you, we. Oops, something happened. Oops, some problem here. All right, okay, back to the code. So. Uh, so now we'll be making the request. So API user likes, and I pass. I will pass uh, the ID. The ID will be me. So I'm, I'm getting the likes from my face, my Facebook wall, wall page. And now I can see uh, the URL is filled. So likes will show instead of ID, it will show me. It just filled the URL for me. Nice. And now we actually do the request. So response equals likes.get 
Nice, so response now it's filled with the, the likes, we can see it. And there are all my, all the first page for likes on my Facebook will be looking at the name of the likes, so the, the pages I liked. And you can see there is a paging and a cursor and a next URL, so we are exploring it. Uh, so we are looking at a name. If you come back to the API documentation, you, we can see the, the response actually has a name, so let's play with it. All right, so um, let's get like the first like I have in, on, my, on the response. So the data has a, an array and I'm accessing the first item and I get, I'm getting the name. So pretty straightforward, you just use, uh, just navigate for it like it's a, a, a Python object. And again, you can see the paging. Let's try to, like, to get the next page, the URL for the next page of results. So this time responses, paging, and next. And we can see the URL, and we can also fetch it. So response page next and dot get. So as you can see, it's pre pretty straightforward for, uh, for, for to uh, fetch new stuff. If you ever have a, have a link, you can just get it. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So. Now let's let's do some. Let's print all the all the all pages I liked on Facebook. So I can just go with four liking response and print the the name of each page. So uh, tapioca will be iterated over it, and, and whenever it reaches the, fin the the end of a page, will fetch more data. That's automatic. So I don't have to worry about paging. It goes goes right away. So that's all my likes. And you can see there's like little breaks. So this is the, the library fetching more data. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so yeah. As, as you can see, I recorded a video. I was too afraid of like doing it right now. So, <laughs> so like, let's try now to play with my photos. All right, so this time we'll be using the user photos endpoint. And I, I will pass in me again as the ID of this endpoint and get it. And now I'll like this is the results. And now I'd like to, like to to get the first picture I have in on my wall. So p data, the first item, and then source. All right. So this is the link for the the image. And let's try to open it on a browser. So again, straightforward. Forward. So open in browser, and we can see the picture on the browser. And you can do this with any link you want. So this is our local Python user group. A lot of people, really nice. And to end, let's just try to post something on my Facebook wall. So this time, API user feed. And now, this, instead of using get, we'll, again, we're passing me because I'm posting to my wall. Uh, and I'll be posting the, using the, the same interface as the request lib has. So data, and I can pass uh, a dictionary of the, the information I need, and it will convert to JSON and send to Facebook. So the message will be posting to my Facebook wall using tapioca. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see it live on, on, on my page now. This is the return, so return an ID for the, for the post I made. So if I go to my profile, <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> See, it just posted on my wall, so it, it did work. Nice. So that's all for now. Uh, let's get back to the presentation. So 
congratulations, you just you now know how to use any tapioca library. So once you, you, uh, you learn how to use one type of tapioca library, you are now able to, to play with any other. So if you get a tapioca Twitter, you, you already know how to play with it. It's just the same as we showed on, on the Facebook one. And let me show you how, how, how easy it is to write a wrapper for any service you want. So this is an example for the Facebook one. Okay, let me leave this. Uh, let me go full screen. And this is all the code I needed to write the wrapper I just play with. So it's 40 line of, lines of Python. It's pretty straightforward, not very difficult. Uh, the rest will be just uh, resource mapping. So it's pretty much a big uh, dictionary with information about endpoints and uh, how to fill them. And that's all. So it's just like a documentation. That it's not like real code. All right. So, uh, so these are our things that comes with any tapioca wrapper. Uh, they have a method for each endpoint. They are extremely, ex extremely explorable, as we saw on the on the demo. They use request lib libs to make requests. So you, if you know requests, you already know how to, to play with the uh, Tapioca library. Uh, they have pagination support, and that comes for free. It has hypermedia support, so you can follow links. Uh, that's also for free. And you, you can access documentation pretty easily. So uh, it's nice. You, you don't have like to know everything before you start uh, coding. You, you can just. Uh, read documentation as you go. So some benchmarking. Uh, the Tapioca li Facebook library has 250 uh, lines of code, and the FacePy one has 1,000, so one-fourth the size. And again, this, is, this includes the resource mapping dic uh, uh, dictionary I show you. So it's not actually, you don't feel like writing code, you just feel like documenting it. Uh, for the Twitter one, it, the difference is much bigger. The Tapioca Twitter has 150 lines of code, and the Python Twitter has 6,000. So huge difference. And for example, it took me one hour to write the full wrapper for the parse.com service. So it's pretty quick. quick. Uh, all right, so some notes about the project. Uh, again, we are, we are instead of uh, having to read wrappers documentation, and API documentation. We will be now reading just uh, API documentation because we're, we're, we already know how to use the wrapper. Uh, it's fun to explore, so it's, we are, you are encouraged to play with the wrapper before you actually do the final implementation. And writing new flavors, new tapioca flavors, it's pretty easy. It's all, uh, almost 100% declarative. You have few, very few lines of code and, and co comes with batteries included. So. Uh, nice. And to finish, that's, there's a lot to improve it. It's a new project. Uh, I've been working on it for about six months. And if you have some ideas and you have like something you'd like to add to it, uh, you are very welcome. There, there are a lot of things I still want to add to it. Uh, they are listed on the GitHub page of the project. You can go there and give your opinions. And yeah, thank you. You have any questions? Oh, yeah, uh, great talk. I wanted to know um, how flexible it is working with because the the APIs you used, Facebook and Twitter, they're pretty RESTful in like a HTTP RESTful style. How well does Tapioca work with APIs that uh, don't really conform to RESTful standards? Is there much flexibility for plugging into those as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, the uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, what API it is; it will use like. It will probably it should use 
the basic HTTP methods, so get, post, delete options. And since it, uh, it used the, the same HTTP methods, you are able to write uh, a TPL call for it. Uh, it may not look like as good as the, the a RESTful API look, but yeah, you still can do it. It's, it's possible. Any other questions? All right, thank you for your talk. Um, do we have any uh, already any implementation to manage different API versions for one endpoint? For example, Facebook has, I've seen a 2.2, but there's a 2.4, and some things are different. Sure. Um, all right, so this is still to be, uh, I mean, defined how, how we work. But my first idea for this would be have uh, different libraries with different versions. So if you want the Facebook 1.0 1 uh, version, you find Tapioca Facebook 1.0. And if you want the 2, you go Tapioca Facebook 2.0. Uh, but I mean, uh, I'm open to to new ideas. If you had some, just tell me. Um, someone back there. Uh, thank you for the talk. I just wanted to check which versions of Python does Tapioca support. Uh, it goes from 2.7 to 3.4. So, yeah, Python 3 compatible. Hi, I wanted to ask you how does Tapioca integrate with uh, asynchronous frameworks? For example, if I use an asynchronous library like Tornado or AsyncIO, how would it integrate? Because the default client would block on request. Is it possible to make the call asynchronous? Uh, like not, currently, not currently. Uh, again, if you have some ideas, just tell me and then we can think of something. Mm, okay, right, thanks. So, but, uh, now it, it doesn't support this. Any other questions? Um, right here. Uh, what other IPIs are supported besides the Facebook and Twitter now? All right, so right now we have Facebook, Twitter, uh, parse.com, Mandrill, and there is some water I don't remember now, but like uh, this is also nice. Uh, if you had, if you want to to implement a new one, please come to me and I'll help you. Uh, I mean, it's all open source. If you want to do it on your own, just do it. But uh, if you have any, any any doubts, just come to me and I, I, I'm help, I will help you writing specific implementations for for services. More questions. All right, I think that's it. Thank you very much.